Hi, this is Risa. Welcome to my Stitch Along series and thank you for subscribing to my channel. As promised, here is a Stitch Along video to a free design pattern that I'm offering to all of my viewers of my design of a blue rose embroidered using shadow work embroidery technique on a lingerie bag. You may click on the link below to download the pattern. The list of materials you'll need are also described in the description below. Once you've completed the embroidery, you can learn how to make the lingerie bag in my Craft Along series by clicking on the link above. Here's the full pattern of the blue rose that I will embroider in the front of the lingerie bag. And here is a part of the pattern that I will embroider at the back of the lingerie bag. Now you may decide to embroider both or just one. Let's get started. Since I'm stitching a lingerie bag, I will first need two pieces of fabric. A 32 inch by 13 inch white crystal organza for the shadow work embroidery. Crystal organza is beautifully transparent and shiny and works really well with shadow embroidery. Now since this video is a stitch along for the embroidery piece, I will only be working with the organza material here. Here you can see that I've cut out 32 inches of the organza material and when you fold it in half that brings you to about 16 inches and that's about approximately the size of your lingerie bag. Now the second piece of material that I will need is a 32 inch by 13 inch fine white cotton fabric and this particular fabric is really soft um, and it's great as backing for the lingerie bag. Here is a printout of the pattern. I've printed it out on tracing paper and I'll tell you why that is useful. This is the front of the blue rose pattern and it goes in the front of the lingerie bag as I had mentioned earlier and part of it is for the back of the lingerie bag as you can see. So I've just used a smaller rose and the rosebud for the back. Next, I'll be using a Frixian heat erasable pen to trace the pattern onto the fabric. And here are all the threads that I will need, the list of which is in the description below. Now for shadow work, you work on the back of the fabric and you will need to trace the pattern. Now this is the right side of the pattern. And the reason I'm using tracing paper is that you can simply reverse the image easily and you will need to trace the reverse image on the back of the fabric, like so. The next important thing to do is to position the pattern before tracing it. Now, I'm going to mark out 12 inches from the bottom fold of the fabric and about 2 inches from the top fold, actually 4 inches since I'm folding it here. Now, I'm going to draw a line with the heat erasable pen of the 12 inches on both the front and the back of the fabric. Now if you have time it'll be good to just run a running stitch seam along the edges so it doesn't fray. I've positioned the pattern so that the rose is facing up towards the cut side as the bottom folded part will be the bottom of the lingerie bag so make sure you do that. The final part of positioning the pattern is to make sure that it's in the center of the fabric so here I'm just folding the fabric in half sort of pressing it so that I have an impression in the center as you can see and I'm going to mark that out with the heat erasable pen and I will use that as a guide when I start tracing the pattern. I'm going to start tracing the pattern with my blue heat erasable friction pen from the left side of the fabric so I don't smudge it as I move along with the tracing and as you know uh, with heat erasable pens, once I iron over it, the pattern lines will disappear, which is really good for tracing on organza or any transparent material. So I'm tracing all of the patterns that need to be embroidered from the front of the fabric with blue. And I'm going to use a green Frixian heat erasable pen to trace the pattern that will require the shadow work. So that way I can differentiate between the two parts when I'm embroidering. Now the good thing about um, organza or any transparent material is that you can see the tracings both from the front 
and the back of the material and you can see the two different color shades and here again I'm tracing the parts that with blue that I will embroider from the front so for example all of the leaves the small buds I will be embroidering using simple satin stitch from the front while for the big bud here and the two roses I'm using the green friction pen since I'll be stitching using shadow work technique here and here I'm using the blue pen to mark out the markings on the rows that I will stitch from the front so essentially I'm swapping between the blue and the green friction pen when I'm tracing the pattern So I've completed the front of the pattern and by just flipping over the folded organza I know where to place the back of the pattern and here is a part of the pattern that I will trace out for the back using the same blue and green technique to identify between the shadow work and the satin work that I'll be stitching. Finally both the patterns have been traced, the front as you can see here and if I just bring up the rest of the fabric here you see the back pattern as well and make sure it's on the same side of the organza meaning the reverse of the patterns on the same side so that when you flip over you have the right side of the pattern here's a quick tutorial on how to embroider shadow work for beginners you can skip this chapter and go straight to the stitch along if you're not a beginner now shadow work we embroider from the back of the fabric so this will be the back and this will become the front when we finish the embroidery. I'm going to use three strands of thread to embroider this sample here and I'm going to start at the bottom of the sample leaf and what you do is you start from the front itself and not from the back as you would normally do for other embroidery stitching and here I've sort of come in and looped the knot as well before I start stitching the shadow work. Now all you need to do is follow the lines and take a little bit of fabric and come out at the hole that you came out on like so and then you cross over to the other line and you take an equidistant bite of fabric and come out onto the same hole as the previous stitch. So this is essentially nothing but a herringbone stitch that you may be familiar with and essentially you just go back and forth from one direction of the pattern to the next or rather one side of the pattern to the other side and you keep crisscrossing the pattern space in this manner. So this is a great um, stitch to be able to cover a lot of space uh, in a short period of time. A lot of people use herringbone stitch also on the right side of the embroidery design. However, with shadow work, you, as I had mentioned, you stitch the pattern on the back of the fabric. Now with shadow work, make sure that your stitches are equidistant from each other. Now here I'm taking a bigger bite of fabric just to demonstrate to you how it would look like in the front. Now when you flip it over, you'll see that all of the other stitches are equidistant, but this particular one here is slightly wider and you'll see also in the background that there's a gap. So try to avoid that. Now here I'm going to show you how to end off. So once you've reached the tip of the leaf, you go on to the right side of the fabric and then you just run a simple back stitch for the remainder of the pattern. And here's the completed sample leaf. You just flip it over and end off with a knot and hide the thread under the herringbone stitches. 
Let's start with the fun part of the stitch along. I've mounted the organza in a six inch hoop and remember the pattern is in reverse and on the back side of the material and I'm going to start with three strands of 996 light blue thread to embroider the shadow work for the large rows and I'm going to start with the light blue in the center and then I'll embroider the dark blue petals of the rose. I've included an image of the completed embroidery piece in the bottom left corner of this video as a reference. As this is the back of the embroidery piece, I will start the shadow work in the front of the hoop and not at the back and I'm going to loop in the knot as I start stitching. And this helps sort of pull the knot inwards um, and it gets concealed under the herringbone stitches that I will stitch. So I've come in on one side of the semicircle as you can see and now I'm going to insert the needle in the opposite side and bring up the needle in the previous hole. And you continue doing this, make sure that your stitches are equidistant when stitching herringbone stitch. However, in this case, it's a semicircle, so you may want to take a larger bite of fabric in the outer circle and a smaller stitch in the inner circle. Now to finish off, simply insert the needle in one of the holes and then come out onto the right side of the fabric and do a back stitch to fill up that gap. Now I'm going to stitch the dark blue petals with two strands of 311 DMC dark blue thread combined with one strand of 033 metallic thread which I bought on Etsy and the link for the shop is provided in the description below. So when you combine uh, cotton and metallic thread sometimes it gets tricky to stitch it but I find that the twinkle that the metallic thread gives the shadow work outline is well worth the effort. You can however just proceed by using three strands of 311 dark blue thread instead of combining it with metallic thread. Now a key technique while embroidering shadow work is how you treat two adjoining embroidery pieces. So in this case, uh, the petals are all adjoining and you can either decide to stitch double lines um, for all of the petals or you can ignore the line that has already been stitched and you just stitch the remaining sort of pattern like I'm doing here. So I'm ignoring the line that is there in the first petal, which is to the left of the petal that I'm currently stitching. I've completed a majority of the blue petals and now I want to show you another important element of shadow work and that is when you already have the lines like here on the blue 
petal and the dark blue petal. So in this case, uh, you wouldn't pierce the fabric at all, but you'll just loop your needle through the light blue and dark blue threads and create the crisscross until you reach the part of the pattern where you would need to uh, create the lines. And in that case, you'll start inserting the needle again. So here on this end, uh, the other petal ends, so I need to insert the needle, while on the light blue side, I still have some thread work that's already been done. So I just loop it into the blue threads. I've completed the shadow work and now what's left is satin work for the white here and here and the orange center which I will do after I complete all of the shadow work for the other flowers as well. To embroider the large rosebud, I'll just stitch herringbone stitches across the main central part of the rosebud because that is going to be stitched with satin stitch from the front of the fabric. And the good thing about the muslin cloth um, and the fact that it's transparent is that all the tracings that I did will still be able to be visible when I flip the fabric over and I'll still be able to see the central line and the fact that it's blue and that it has to be stitched with white DMC floss. The last bit of the shadow work are the small flowers, uh, two of which I've already completed and I'll stitch the third one for the video.
I've completed all of the shadow work and I've flipped the fabric onto the right side and we'll start stitching the rest of the pattern and I'm starting with three strands of orange 7 for 1 DMC floss and I will stitch a few stab stitches or long and short stitches here in the center of the large rows. Now with two strands of white DMC thread, I'm going to stitch the two white parts of the large rows with satin stitch. With a single strand of silver metallic thread, I am stitching a few long and short stitches as veins in the small rows. Using two strands of orange thread, I'm going to stitch the center of the small flowers and using the silver metallic thread, I will stitch single stab stitches as veins in the petals of the small flower. Coming back to the large rosebud, I am stitching satin stitches with two strands of white thread for the central vein of the rosebud. With two strands of brown DMC105 thread, I'm going to stitch stem stitch for the stems in this pattern. As you can see, I started the stitch from the front with a few stab stitches. And remember to stitch stem stitch always in the same direction. For the small buds in the pattern, I'm going to use a combination of dark blue, light blue and metallic silver thread and I will stitch long and short stitches starting with the dark blue color and then moving on to the light blue and then the silver.
Coming back to the large rows, I am stitching the sepal with two strands of light blue, dark blue and a single strand of the silver metallic thread using long and short stitches. The sepal for the small rows is stitched in the same manner with long and short stitches. Here I'm starting with the silver metallic thread and then I'll move to the dark blue thread and then light blue. I'm going to stitch the first leaf with satin stitch using two strands of dark blue thread and one strand of silver metallic thread. So the first thing here to do is to stitch one side of it with the dark blue satin and then I'll move on to the silver metallic thread.
finally I've gotten to the largest leaf in my pattern and I'm going to stitch this with two strands of dark blue thread uh, with satin stitch at the top of the leaf and then I'll follow that with a single strand of metallic silver thread using leaf stitch technique. So with leaf stitch, uh, you essentially come in from the corner of the leaf pattern, go in at the center along the vein, and then come out on the other side on the edge and come back in in the center along the vein. So that's how we stitch a leaf stitch. It's pretty much a satin stitch, but you go about it by stitching it from opposite sides. To finish off with two strands of white thread, I'm going to stitch a vein with simple split stitch in the center of the large leaf. There it is, I've completed my blue rose pattern shadow work for the front of my lingerie bag and you can stitch part of the pattern by re-watching the video for the back of the bag. Thank you for watching this video, I hope it was useful, don't forget to click on the subscribe like and notification buttons. See you again next time. Bye bye.